So after thinking about logging in, I'm now going to talk a little bit about reducing workload during citation screening. And I should say it's, it's not just a, about reducing workload. There are sort of review efficiencies um, which are available using text mining and machine learning which don't involve um, reducing workload. So I've got a couple of slides for you first of all and then I'll take you into Epi Reviewer and then you can see what it looks like in there. And please do feel free to ask questions on this um, but I am going to go quite quickly because I'm aware that we've got to cover lots as we go today. Okay, so I could, I could have a poll, couldn't I? Um, I often, if I'm doing a live presentation on this, I, I ask how many people have um, have have, in, have have had the pleasure of, of of doing citation screening, where they've screened thousands of citations in the course of doing a review, um, and then I ask um, how many people are actually in, are, are enjoying um, that kind of activity. Um, well, from what we find is that we can spend an awful lot of time when doing systematic reviews basically screening out irrelevant citations. And I've seen um, quite a lot of reviews spend so much time on the irrelevant citations that the, by the time we've got to looking at um, actually what we're interested in in the review, um, we're starting to run out of time to do the analysis, which seems crazy. And so that's, that's really what has driven my interest in using machine learning. Um, and I have been doing it now since around 2007 um, and it's taken a number of years to sort of develop the tools and the methods to the point at which we're, we're now able to roll them out and use them um, widely but we are actually now at that point so um, there are tools available and there are tools in Epi Review which you can use if you want. So the usual way of doing citation screening is read a title abstract, decide whether or not it's relevant, click next, and do it again and sometimes do that again several thousand times. What we'd like to be able to do and what we're doing when we're using text mining machine learning is changing the distribution of studies, changing the order in which we screen the citations. So if you can imagine on the top here the traditional screening, um, you can see each little dot representing a study and the red ones indicating eligible studies. Essentially the red ones are distributed randomly and fairly evenly throughout the probe throughout the screening process. If we start on the left hand side here, we have to get screen absolutely everything before we find all of the relevant citations. What we want to do um, when we're using machine learning, here comes my magnet, um, is, is to use some kind of um, technique, technology, which will pull the relevant citations towards the beginning of the screening process and at the same time repel, push away the irrelevant ones towards the end. So that's what this is depicting depicting here. And what, what you can see of course is also that it's not a perfect process in that there are some irrelevant citations that are appearing quite near the beginning of the process and there are some relevant ones which have been mixed up towards the end. Um, though depending on how well the machine is performing um, you, get, you get different distributions. Um, and I've got some, um, some material on that in a second. But basically that, that's the, that's the the way in which we can interact with the technology and use that technology is to, as we, as we screen, the machine learns what we're looking for and increasingly, if it's working well, increasingly is able to distinguish between relevant and irrelevant citations. And the process is something called active learning, which is what this depicts here. Essentially, the first stage, we enter our citations up into our database. We then do some initial manual screening of a random sample. Um, the actual machine learning doesn't seem to mind um, working off only sort of 10 relevant and 10 irrelevant citations, I mean sort of five relevant, five irrelevant citations. So working off 10 um, records. Um, but so usually we do, we, we have a larger sample than that. And you can calculate how large it should be using um, fairly standard power calculations. Then the interesting bit starts because in, sec in stage three we have the machine learning. So based on what we've already screened at ran uh, random, we've got an unbiased sample there of what irrelevant and, and relevant look like and we can build a machine model to be able to distinguish one from the other. What we do is we then build that model and then we apply that model to all of the remaining citations. 
And rather than getting the machine to say relevant or irrelevant, what we do is we ask it to prioritize them. We, we look at the probability that something is a relevant citation. And then what we do is we order them by probability with the ones that are most likely to be relevant at the top of the list. And then in section four then, we screen the top of the list. And the way that we've implemented an Epi Reviewer is um, we screen sort of the next 25. After 25, the machine reruns its model, it relearns and then re-ranks everything that's still remaining to be screened and you and, and the re reviewer carries on screening. And so this cycle of learning and manual screening progresses until I, we've got some kind of stopping criterion. So either the stopping criterion is we've looked at everything or the stopping criterion is that we think we've found all the relevant citations. Now even if we've decided that we, you know, we want to tick that box and say that we've looked at everything um, manually, the, the, the fact that we've managed to find all of the relevant citations much earlier in the process than we would otherwise have done is actually very useful in and of itself. We find that if, if, when we're doing reviews here, that if we can turn this um, prioritization on, we can get those relevant studies really quickly, we can then pull down the full text and start um, assessing them and start moving further down the review process earlier than we would have otherwise have been and still have that tale of more irrelevant citations being screened by other people in the team. So that's a useful um, outcome in its own right, even though we're not always using it to um, determine relevance from irrelevance. So the results of this ordered list, as I've mentioned, with ones that are the most similar to the ones already at the top, and then we just carry on screening. So obviously the question is, well, does it does it actually work? And um, yes, actually it does work pretty well now. Um, on the whole, here are six reviews from the Cochrane Heart Group, and at the moment we're we're going to work our way through and um, and get all of the reviews in this group that we can. Um, so that we've got a we've got a good um, basis, got a good broad basis for looking at um, the performance of this technology. So what I've run here is some simulation studies. I think there are ten simulation studies per review group, where I've started with different samples of relevant and irrelevant citations. Along the x-axis, we've got screening progress. So we start at the beginning um, on the left here with um, screening one citation. We get to the end in this review in the middle here. There's, a, looks like there's about 15,000 items screened. And then on the y-axis, we've got the cumulative number of citations or relevant citations found. Um, and if we were screening at random in a normal review, we'd get a, we'd get a line going across the diagonal here. As you can see that um, we're, we're well above that diagonal line in these reviews. Um, in some of the reviews, you can see that we really have found all of the relevant citations using this process after we've screened a very small proportion of the studies. In some of the reviews, um, for example, one on the top left and the one on the bottom right, um, you can see that we've sort of maxed out um, only after we've screened a baby band a quarter or a third of the citations. But certainly for all of for these reviews and for many of these studies that I'm looking at now, um, when running these simulation studies, um, it's typical to find now that after um, is simulating manual screening over 50% of the citations. Um, we've already found all of the relevant studies and for many reviews we found them much, much earlier than that. So you can see potentially, um, as well as finding these studies nice and quickly in the process, potentially there's the, there's the opportunity here to um, not screen all of the other citations. Obviously the danger is when you're doing this in a live review is is the unknown, is, is not knowing whether or not you really have found everything or if there's one that for some reason has been um, pushed down towards the end, um, which you would only find if you manually screen them all. Okay, um, there's, there's some papers here which you can, you can um, pick up if you want. Um, we've done some comparisons of sort of more clinical areas with public health and um, with a few enhancements you can get the public health working pretty well. Um, we've done some work looking at live reviews, a process evaluation. Um, I won't go into all the detail here, but essentially um, what we're interested in doing is, is looking at how people, whether, whether or not screening behavior changes when you start having um, this technology working in the background. And it looks as though it's, it's safe to use um, in terms of people's behavior changing, but you know, we're 
obviously more, more research is always needed on that. Um, and also, when you're using this in live reviews, sometimes you don't get the textbook graphs because um, people organize their screening in different ways. You can, you can end up sort of getting some reviews with these very strange shaped graphs. doesn't mean that the machine isn't working well. It just means that there's been a slightly different process at work in the background or by, by the reviewers. And the last thing to say on this is that for updating existing reviews, this is um, a very useful technology because if you've got all of the decisions from the existing review and if the scope hasn't changed, you've, you've basically got all the citation screening data. You can build a model straight off that and then get re usually very good performance in terms of just classifying all of the um, citations according to relevance and irrelevance and, and then using the ranking in the same ways that you would. It's just that you've got more data to work with, so you get a good mo model earlier in the process than you otherwise would. <laughs>